In today's video, we're going to be using Scratch to create ourselves a simple version of the game Pong. I'll give you an example uh, by clicking, clicking the green flag up here of how Pong is going to work. Basically, you've got a ball that bounces around the stage, and if it hits the red line, it's game over. That was a bit of a dodgy call there, but I'll play it again. If you get over 10 points, though, you are the winner. And I'll just tell you that you've won, so I'll try and get my score up to 10 points without crashing or missing the ball. Nearly there on 7, 8, 9. You get 10, and then anything more than 10, you win. There we go, the game stops and it tells you that you've won. And as you saw before, if you miss the ball and it hits this red line, okay, then it's game over. So what I'm going to do is make a new file here in Scratch and we'll get started. First thing you want to do is click on your stage over here on the left of your toolbox and you want to bring in a background. So the way we do that is just hit the first button here that says choose a backdrop from the library. Go through and choose a backdrop that you want to use. I'm going to select the neon tunnel. Looks pretty cool. And we want to get rid of this cat and replace it with a ball. So just right click on the cat sprite and delete it. And to bring in the ball sprite, hit this little troll here, which lets you choose a new sprite from the library, and select this orange ball. Just double click it, and that will bring it into your game. Now you want to add a bit of code onto this ball to get it bouncing around the page. Basically, we want this ball to keep bouncing around the page and just rebounding off the edges of the page, or the sides of the page. Okay, and to do that, we go to our events tab, we bring in the first little piece of code that says when the green flag is clicked or basically when we start our game and click that green flag the next thing you want to do is get this ball to start in a certain position okay so the position we want to start in let's click go to X and Y we want it to start right in the middle of the page on the X axis and for the Y axis we're going to put in 160 okay so when you press the green flag that's the start position for our ball each time our game starts so right at the top Next thing we want to do is we want to get our ball pointing in a certain direction. So over here, point in direction, and I want you to choose, actually we don't want to choose any of those presets, we want to choose 45 degrees. Okay, it's basically moving at a diagonal direction. Okay, if you press the green flag, you're not going to notice any difference there because it's not moving yet. Okay, so let's get it to move and we'll see if it starts moving in a diagonal direction. So to get it to move, we need to bring out move. 10 steps. Okay, I might change it to 15 steps just to speed it up a little bit so it moves a bit quicker. And we want to say if it's on the edge of the page, or edge of the stage, sorry, we want it to bounce off it, come back into our game. Alright, and to finish off with, we need to put a forever loop around that piece of code. So this code is always running, so it's always moving 15 steps. Okay, so if, if it is hitting the edge of the page, it's bouncing back into our game. And just move that block of code up so it attaches onto your other code. Now when you press the green flag, you should have a ball that moves in a diagonal direction. And if it hits the edges of the page, it will just bounce back into the game. Okay, so that's looking good so far. Next thing we need to do is bring a little green paddle into our game that goes along the bottom of the page here. That hits our ball back up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new sprite for that. So in the new sprite section here, hit the first option, that little troll. And under the Things category, scroll down until you find the word Paddle. You'll see the green paddle. I want you to pick that paddle up and move it somewhere towards the bottom of your stage. Not right on the bottom, because remember we've got to put a red line below it. Okay, so just up a little bit from the bottom of the stage, you should have your paddle. And we just need to put in a little bit of code to make it move left and right with our mouse. So whatever way our mouse moves on the x-axis, we want that paddle to follow. So in the events tab, let's bring out when the green flag is clicked, when we start our game. And we're going to do a motion. We're going to set the X value of this paddle to zero. But we're going to change that zero. Okay, what we want to change that to over in our sensing panel here is mouse X. So whatever our mouse's X coordinate is, so wherever we are left and right on the page, that paddle is going to follow us. And we also need to put a forever loop around that so that our paddle is always following our mouse. Just snap that onto when the green flag is clicked, 
press the green flag to test it out and you should now have the green paddle following your mouse. Okay, that's looking pretty good. It won't go up and down, which is handy. We just want it moving left and right across the X axis. So that's all we need for that. So stop your code. Oh, sorry, stop your game for the minute. And we'll move on to the next bit. Now, obviously, the next bit is getting this ball to bounce off the paddle so it comes back up um, and stays in the game. So what we need to do is go back and click on our ball sprite. So the next piece of code must be on our ball. We're going to go to our events and we're going to bring out another one of these green flags. So when the green flag is clicked, what we want to do is go to our control and bring out an if-then statement. Okay, so if a certain condition is true, then we want a series of events to follow. That's going to make a bit more sense in a moment. So what we want to do is we want to go to sensing and bring out this first option that says if touching the mouse pointer. We're going to change the mouse pointer to the paddle. So now our code says when the game has started, if our ball is touching the paddle, then what do we want it to do? There's a couple of things we want it to do. The first thing, we want it to bounce back up into our game. So we need to swing it around 180 degrees clockwise. Okay, so turn the ball around 180 degrees. Next thing we're going to do is keep the ball moving. Okay, so the first option here is move 10 steps. But as you saw before, we're moving it at a speed of 15 steps. So just change that 10 to 15. And finally, just in the control there, we're just going to wait. Not one second, but 0 0.5, so half a second. Okay, and then we can come back and redo that code. The last thing we need to do to make sure this code um, is consistently running and always listening out to see if we are uh, touching the ball on the paddle is a forever loop. So put a forever loop around that code so it's always running this code while our game is playing. Okay, let's put that over there. Now if we press the green flag, let's see if we can hit this ball. There we go, so our paddle hits the ball. It seems to be always going in that one direction, doesn't it? So we might have to change that in our code very shortly. Um, what I think we might do to change that is here where we say turn 180 degrees. Let's change that by going to our operators and choosing pick random 1 to 10 and replace that 180 degrees with pick random 1 to 10. And we'll change the 1 to 10 to 170 and 190 degrees. Now hopefully when the ball touches our paddle that it bounces off in random directions. So it's not always bouncing in the same direction. And it seems to be doing that now which is good. Okay, so I'll stop that, so that make sure you get that pick random in to make your ball bounce off the paddle in random directions. Makes the game a little bit more exciting. Next thing we want to do is we want to put a red line along the bottom of our stage here, and if the ball hits that, it will be game over. That just means the user has missed the ball with the paddle, and the ball's gone straight past to finish our game. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to go back to our stage over here, and select it, and then go up to the backdrops tab. And we should have our um, backdrop appear. What we're going to do is simply grab... Uh, I'm going to go back to bitmap mode. I'm in vector mode here. I just want to go back to bitmap mode. Select the brush, which is the first option here. Choose the color red, if it's not already on that. And increase your brush size, or the line width. It's about there, about three quarters up in that little bar. Hold down the shift key. And you want to draw a red line across the bottom of your page. Okay, now when you draw it on, make sure it is below your green paddle. Okay, so you can see mine's pretty much perfect, right below that green paddle. Okay, and if you're happy with that, just go back to the scripts tab up the top. This is now the red line. Okay, that if the ball hits, then it's game over. Alright, so let's go back to the ball sprite now and put a bit more code in. We'll go up to our events tab here and bring out when the green flag is clicked. Okay. Now we don't want to kill our um, player straight away, so let's just put in wait half a second before this code kicks in. And we're going to bring out an if-then statement. Okay, so if our ball is touching a certain color, then we're going to stop or finish our game. So let's bring out touching color and put it in between the if and then. So if we're touching the color, at the moment it's like a purpley, bluey kind of color. I want you to click on that and then go and click on the red line in your game. And you'll notice that 
this little box changes to the red color. So now if the ball is touching the color red, then we're just going to stop our game. Okay, so in your control panel, choose stop all. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is get a forever loop and wrap it around that if then statement. So we wait 0.5 seconds, then we've got the forever loop in that will always be running this code. So our game is always listening out to see if the ball is actually touching that red line. Okay, and when it does, it just stops our game. If you wanted to, you could display a little message there saying that they lose, but I'm just going to leave that out for now. You can add that in if you would like. Okay, so let's give that a test run. We'll just see if the ball hits the red line. Yep, our game stops. Okay, so that's looking good. We're getting close to finishing now. To make the game a bit more exciting, we might put a score in. Okay, so let's go to our data panel here, and we're going to make a new variable. That variable name is going to be score. Leave for all sprites selected and click OK. And you'll see that your score appears up in the top left-hand corner of the game. All right. Next thing we're going to do, still on the ball sprite here, is we're going to add in yet another event with the green flag being clicked. Okay, and basically each time the ball hits the paddle now, we want to add one to this score. Actually, I might take this out. We can just add it in over here. All right, so I've just realized if the ball is touching the paddle, what we're going to do is just change our score by one. So back in the data tab, got this option to change a score by one. Just put it in above those blue uh, pieces of code. So if ball touches the paddle, we change the score by one, and then we move it back up into our game. Okay, that will save us a few lines of code if we do it that way. One other thing we do need to add in, so I probably could have left this green flag in, so bring in another one of these green flags. When the game starts, we just want to set our score to zero. Okay, otherwise our score will carry over from the last time we played the game. So make sure that our score always starts on zero. Okay, now we've nearly finished. I'll just test that actually to make sure that our score goes up. So you can see each time you hit the paddle, our score in the top left-hand corner there goes up. And if I let it go now, that was our final score. Okay, now if we get that score over 10, then we, we're going to tell the user that they've won the game. Alrighty, so what we need to do is we need to make a new sprite. So hit, uh, not the little troll this time, we're going to hit the paintbrush because we're going to paint this new sprite ourselves. Okay, and I want you to convert to vector down in the bottom right here. Grab your text tool, choose a color for your text. I'm going to choose orange. I'm going to change my font to the scratch font. You can choose any of these fonts. Let's click on your page and I'm going to write in capital letters U1. Okay. When you click off it, you get a little bounding box that will let you resize it. Just resize it and position it. You'll just have to watch on your game here. Position it somewhere in the center of your game. Something like that looks good. Okay. Um, probably nothing else we need to do to that. So let's go back to our scripts. Okay, now still on this sprite. What I might do is hit that little information tab and rename it just to message. Oops, give it a more meaningful name. Just hit the back arrow there to take you back. So on my message sprite now, I'm going to add in a final bit of code that says when the green flag is clicked, we actually want to hide this. We don't want this in our game because obviously when we start our game, the user has not won the game. So in your looks panel, just hide it. So when we start our game, you'll see that that text disappears. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to wait until the score is bigger than 10. When it's bigger than 10, then they've won. So in our control panel here, we're just going to wait until, and in our operators, uh, we'll choose larger than, and in our data, we're going to choose score, put in that first box, and put 10 in the second box. So we're going to wait until our score is greater than 10. When it's greater than 10, we're going to go back to the looks, and we're going to show our message. Okay, and the final thing that we need to do in the control panel here is choose stop all. That finishes our game off. Okay, just for testing purposes, I might just change this number to five. So it's just going to get quicker. So if I um, get a score bigger than five, this game should stop. So we're on four. 
five, one more point and I win. There we go. So you won. So you can put whatever you want in here. So I'm going to put it back to ten. So now the person or the player has to get ten points before they are the winner. Okay. So that's it. That's our game of Pong all created. Make sure you save that up. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.